Hello everyone, my name is Jean-Ri and I work for Cubansoft as an engineer. In the latest ANSYS release 2022R1, we are able to conduct a two-dimensional analysis using a virtual multi-material Euler domain in ANSYS Mechanical Explicit. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a 2D virtual MME domain and simulate a shape charge cutting through a thick blade in ANSYS Mechanical. In the latest release, a virtual MME domain is created in any two-dimensional analysis if any of the bodies have the reference frame set to Eulerian. All you need to go do is select the geometry and change the reference frame from Lagrangian to Eulerian. The Euler-Lagrange coupling will be enabled automatically. A 2D MME analysis enables the simulation of extreme deformation events such as fluid or gas flow without suffering from high mesh distortion or tangling which may occur when using a Lagrangian mesh. It also allows for significant speed up of solution times for analyses that can be considered as 2D axisymmetric or 2D plane strain compared to an equivalent three-dimensional MME analysis. Before I commence with the demonstration, I would like to show you a video on the functioning of a shape charge. I would also like to give credit to the creators operational facts as I will be playing the video from their YouTube channel. Shape charge, an explosive in which the energy is focused in a particular direction. A shape charge is used when a barrier needs to be breached with a limited amount of explosive. There are many types of shape charges. Here we'll show a common type. First, there is the casing which will contain the explosive. Next, the housing which will contain the detonator. Now, the metal liner. The liner material and shape is the most important part of a shape charge. We'll see why shortly. The liner used in this example is made of copper. Next is the main explosive itself, followed by the booster explosive. Finally, the detonator is added. An electrical charge is used to trigger the detonator. The detonator causes the booster to explode with enough force to cause the less sensitive main explosive to explode. As the shock front travels through the main explosive, it squeezes the liner into a thin jet which is then expelled at very high speed away from the explosive. Without melting, the kinetic energy alone of the liner is now able to cut through a thick barrier at a precise location. We start with our demonstration in ANSYS Workbench 2022R1 and drag an explicit dynamics analysis system onto the project schematic. Since we will be conducting a two-dimensional axisymmetric analysis of the shape charge, we need to change the analysis type from 3D to 2D under the advanced geometry options. Once we are ready, we can import the geometry from the selected folder. To view or change the geometry, we can double click to open SpaceClaim. Once SpaceClaim is open, you are free to create new sketches and to create new geometry using the Sketch and Design tabs. The geometry for the demonstration have already been created and consist of four surface bodies. The casing, the explosive, the liner and the plate. This geometry represents a two-dimensional cross-section of the three-dimensional shape charge and plate globally rotated about the y-axis. In order for us to conduct a two-dimensional axisymmetric analysis, there are certain rules that we need to comply with. These may be found in the Mechanical Applications User Guide within the ANSYS Help Doc. The first rule is that the axis of symmetry must coincide with the global y-axis. Secondly, the geometry must lie on the positive x-axis of the xy-plane. When we take a look at our geometry, we can see that these rules have already been complied with. After the geometry is prepared, we go back to Workbench to add materials to our projects. We can do this by double-clicking on the engineering data cell. By default, structural steel will always be listed. In order for us to access additional material libraries, we can click on engineering data sources. The material library that we will be using for our simulation is the explicit materials library. This material library contains sophisticated material models that will accurately describe the material behavior during an explicit simulation. 
three additional materials that we will be using in our project are Comp B, Copper and Stainless Steel 304. To add a material to the project, you can simply click on the plus icon next to the material. I'll simply be scrolling through the list now to add all the materials to the project. Once you have added all the materials to your project, we can click on Engineering Data Sources again to view the list of materials that we have added. These materials will also be available in the mechanical application. To launch the mechanical application, we can now double click on the model cell. Once the mechanical application has launched, we can now set up our simulation by following the structure tree from top to bottom. We can start by changing the 2D behavior from plane stress to axisymmetric under the geometry branch. We can also assign our material properties here. The casing, we will leave at the default structural steel. The liner, we will change to copper. The explosive is Comp B. And finally, the plate will be manufactured from stainless steel 304. We also need to change the reference frame from Lagrangian to Illyrian for the appropriate bodies. The casing, we will leave it Lagrangian in order for us to be able to constrain it. The liner, explosive and plates, we will change from Lagrangian to Illyrian. When you expand the materials branch, you will see all the materials listed that we added to our project. By clicking on the material, you will also be able to view the material properties within the mechanical application. When we expand the connections branch, we are able to see all the body interactions that have been defined for the explicit model. When we do an explicit simulation, we work with body interactions instead of contacts. The default body interaction that has been defined is frictionless. For the purposes of this simulation, this is appropriate and will be left as is. The next step is to generate the mesh. To apply global mesh controls, we can click on the mesh branch. You will see that the physics preference has already been set to explicit. The element size that we will be using for this model is 0.5 mm. In order to generate the mesh, we can right click on mesh and select generate mesh. As you can see, the mesh has generated a nice uniform all quad mesh, which is preferable for an explicit simulation. We can also go view the characteristic length by changing the display style from the geometry setting to characteristic length. This is of interest because the characteristic length directly influences the solver time step. The smaller your minimum characteristic length, the smaller your time step will be. And the smaller your time step is, the longer it will take for your model to solve. We are now ready to apply the boundary conditions to our model. The first boundary condition I will add is a fixed support to the casing of the shape charge. This is to constrain the casing and to propel the energy forwards. The only other boundary condition I will be adding is a denotation point at the back of the explosive. We may now define the analysis settings for the solver. To do so, you can click on analysis settings. In this case, the end time will be specified as 3.75 e to the minus 5 seconds, as this is approximately how long it takes for the shape charge to cut through the stainless steel plates. We also need to define the Euler domain. Ensure that the domain size definition is set to manual. In this case, the minimum x coordinates will remain 0 mm, while the minimum y coordinates will be changed to minus 10 mm. The x dimension, which is the height, will be specified as 50 mm, while the y dimension, which is the width, will be specified as 150 mm. We also need to define the resolution of the domain. To do so, we can change total cells to cells per component. In this case, the number of cells in the x direction will be defined as 80, while the number of cells in the y direction will be double and be defined as 160. We also need to change the lower x phase from flow out to rigid, as this represents the axis of symmetry. To view the Euler domain, you can click elsewhere and on analysis settings again. 
you may also zoom in to view the resolution of your domain. We are now ready to solve our model. To do so, you can right click on Explicit Dynamics and select Solve. Once the analysis is complete, we may start with the post processing. This analysis took approximately 80 seconds to run, which is significantly less time it would have taken if it was a three dimensional model. To insert a total velocity plot, we can right click on Solution and select Insert Deformation Total Velocity. To insert a total velocity plot for only certain bodies, we can repeat the process and then select the applicable bodies. In this case, I would like to plot the total velocity for the liner as well as the stainless steel plates. We may now right click on Solution to evaluate all the results. Finally, we may view the results of our simulation. To view an animation of your results, you may click on the play button. We'll repeat the process for the other total velocity plot as well.